Diva is hard to explain, but kind of easy to pick up, so I guess we'll start with the hard part. Defense Matrix. It's arguably the best ability in the game, so it's very important we know how to use it. In no particular order, here's when to use it. 1. To eat abilities. Diva is one of the only heroes in the game that can consistently eat abilities, so it goes without saying it's her job to do it as often as possible. There's two tricks to make her job easier. The first one is tracking abilities. You don't have to worry about an Ana anti in your team if she just used it. The second trick is to put yourself in a position to matrix the abilities. If you know a Roadhog is flanking, you don't need to chase him off. Just play close enough and near cover so when he hits the hook, you can just matrix him. And then boom, all his value as a hero is gone for the next 8 seconds. 2. Matrix to help with rotations. This is a very important concept because Overwatch is a game that is often won by the team with superior positioning. And guess what? Rotations are meant to give you that. The timing can be confusing, but here's the play by play of how I do it at the start of the game. Objective, get the other tank through the choke. Be very patient for when he's going to peek, and when he does, that's the cue to Matrix. Sometimes you'll have heroes who won't rotate with the team, and that's okay. Not every rotation has to be a 6 man rotation. 3. Last but not least, use Matrix to save yourself or a teammate. If there's a high chance someone's going to die or take a lot of damage, then this is probably as good of a time as any to use Defense Matrix. The important part is you're using it to lower risks. So now that we covered Defense Matrix and rotations, what's the general playstyle as fights break down? First and foremost, keep track of who can threaten your backline and depending on who it is, matrix them or shoot them dead. For example, if a solo Winston leaps in, there's no sense in matrixing his damage, just micro missile and shotgun him down. Alternatively, a teleporting reaper might two tap your support, so in this case, you'll definitely want to start with matrix. But then there's the third threat, which doesn't involve a dive or flank, that is a hit scan on the high ground. Since you're the mobile shotgun tank, it's your job to kill or at least force them off high ground. Sometimes they'll have a pocket which makes it hard for a solo tank to clear, but so long as you don't lose your mech in the process, it's usually worth contesting even if it's only for a few seconds. Assuming there's no immediate threat to your backline, you help your frontline. In cases where your team comp isn't mobile enough to dive, it's in my opinion the best way to apply pressure is to take aggressive angles that enable you to shoot the enemy sides, matrix your other tank, and ideally provide enough cover to prevent you from easily being poked out. Sometimes you can go for one man dives into the backline to secure a kill or prevent heals, but if it seems too risky, then save that play for when you have your ultimate. Which brings me to the ultimate, self destruct. I'm just gonna call it diva bomb. There are two ways to properly diva bomb. One, to remech. Pretty self explanatory, you're caught in a bad spot and the team fight is undecided, it's better to be safe than sorry so you'll use your get out of jail card and go again. 2. To change the tempo. If your team is down resources or map control, throwing in the diva bomb can be a great way to turn the tide. Some very experienced diva players have set bomb spots that abuse the lack of cover and result in free kills. As someone who's never been one of those players, I'll tell you that you can get very far with just improvised bombs. So if you don't want to spend hours in a custom game learning spots, that's okay. I will say, however, it's definitely worth hopping into a custom game to learn the interaction with bomb and boosters. What I mean by this is if you boost and bomb at the same time while pointing straight up, chances are your bomb is going to the skybox and catching air. But if you use about half the boosters, then it'll give your bomb time to fall down and at the very least, scare somebody. I almost didn't talk about micro missiles, but that's honestly because there's not much to them. They're great for farming low charge, great for busting shields, and especially good for shooting armored targets. Not much to say other than try to have them on standby if you plan to take a 1v1. Lastly, to answer a question I'd imagine most D.Va players have, how to play against Zarya. Unfortunately, there's not much of a secret. You just have to avoid her until you have an advantage. Definitely stay out of beam range. If she can ever 600 to zero you, that's most likely your fault for being out of position. I think a good example to think back to is the hit scan getting pocketed on high ground. If she's flanking or poses an immediate threat to your backline, then you have to push her and force those cooldowns. Just be ready to run for cover if you don't have your get out of jail ability. If you want tips for eating grabs, you can check out the Graviton Surge vs Defense Matrix video I did on that a while back. That concludes this video, but before you head out, if you enjoy the video, consider supporting me on Patreon. Yes, that's right, I started a Patreon. I really enjoy making YouTube videos for you guys, but streaming is what keeps me in business. So depending on how much support I get on Patreon, I'll be able to upload more videos more frequently. Link down below. As always, thank you for watching, and good luck on the grind.